We've got a very short little module here, just a couple of slides. Let's talk about a way to think about computing the return of a bond or a bond portfolio, and let's build in a way to break it down into subcomponents. Now, this, is not the, this is not the only way it could have been done, but it's useful. It's what's in the curriculum. You should know it. It's a five-step model. Know the five-step model. We'll also revisit it in later segments, and we'll see. Well, in some cases, not every step applies. We can start to shortcut it, but let's get the basic model in mind. Now, I started out by drawing a yield curve. Remember that yield curves are normally upward sloping, and they're also generally concave. Notice, if, you know, if I, if I kept extremely doing this, I'd have a cave. Now, that's a little bit extreme, but makes the point of why we call it concave. By the way, we're going to see why that's normally true in some later segments. If it wasn't concave, Man, that would be a great situation because I can make more money and have extra benefits. It'd be like a free lunch. That's why the yield curve is almost always concave. Free lunches don't normally exist. That's just an aside. Let's say I pick a point and I buy that bond. It has a stated initial yield to maturity. So how can I think about either making projections or waiting till after the fact to decompose what is going to happen. So let's say I buy a 3% coupon bond, and let's say the price is 101. Well, I have a current yield, 2.97%. Over the next year, I will earn 2.97% current income return. In this model, let's make a hypothetical assumption. We buy the bond, we hold it, and the yield curve does not change. Now, if the yield curve is upward sloping, if it doesn't change, I hold the bond, time passes. Oh, notice its yield is going to roll downward. So let's call this roll down return. Because the yield curve is normally upward sloping, when I buy a longer bond, if I hold it, and if the curve doesn't shift, the yield on the bond is going to roll downward. And of course, if the yield rolls downward, in general, the price is going to move upward. There could be some premium discount issues there, but in simple situations, the price will move upward. So let's take the projected ending price if the yield curve didn't move which means the yield of my bond will roll downward. Let's divide it by beginning price minus 1. So a projected return, if the yield curve doesn't move, I would have a price return of 0.99%. Uh, by the way, you will often see people talk about the rolling yield. That's the combination of 1 and 2. What's my income return, which is pretty certain, What's my hypothetical price return if the yield curve does not move? But of course, yield curves can change. Interest rates could go up or down. So we need to continue on. Step three, let's go ahead and analyze what really happens. Uh, in our curve situation, notice we projected a drop in the yield. But what does the manager predict? Well, actually, we've already factored this in, but now from this point, what is the manager's prediction of whether rates will rise or down from that projected roll-down yield that would occur? Well, let's take a situation where the manager projects uh, that the rate will change by 45 basis points. Now, that be, could be because the general level of rates are moving up and down, or the spread of this bond versus those yield curve bond chain. There could be lots of reasons the delta R of this bond is different than what the roll down delta R would have been. The manager is making an active position. Well, with a prediction of delta R, minus duration delta R is percentage change in value. By the way, a refinement and a slightly more accurate formula says plus one-half convexity delta R squared. So if given both the duration, duration and convexity, 611, negative, the negative means rates up, value down, plus one-half, one 
convexity, the convexity is minus 10.75. These numbers have to be given. And it's not minus C, it's just C. Convexity numbers can be positive. Convexity numbers can be negative. Whatever C is, you plug it in. D, in any normal bonds, the duration is written as being a positive number. And in the equation, we always use minus D. In the equation we use C, can C, C's can be positive, they can be negative, they're probably positive most of the time. We've got a situation where the convexity is negative 10.75. Plug it in, delta R squared. So we would project a 2.75% decline in value due to duration. There's a slight adjustment for that due to the convexity. We're projecting a 2.76% drop in value because we don't think the yield of this bond it will be simply what the roll down yield would have been. We think the yield will actually be something different than the roll down yield level would have been. We're going to lose 2.76%. If this was a credit risk-free domestic bond, that would be the end of the story. Let's say it's a credit risky bond. Let's make a projection over time given a probability and recoveries. Do we think we might lose anything due to credit deterioration? We're projecting we could lose seven basis points due to adverse credit events. If this was not denominated in a domestic currency, remember, we also have foreign currency risk. Either we project no change in the foreign currency, or this is a domestic bond and there is no currency risk, but for whatever reason, we've decided that risk is zero. So if this is a projection, we have our numbers, or after the fact, we could look this data up and decompose the sources of return for the bond. Summing them up, projected return of 1.13%. Know the model, understand the five steps in the model, we will see and be revisiting this topic as we move along.